heart feels. I can't tell you the joy that's in my spirit today, God. I don't have the words to express it. But I'm here to do my best. I'm here to lift your name up, to worship you in the beauty of holiness. And you've already promised, Lord. You've already promised that you've come to heal, that you're here to save, that you're here to deliver, that you're here to set free. Does anybody believe that today? Come on, does anybody believe God's here to deliver and set free and baptize people with the Holy Ghost? Why don't you give him a hand clap of praise all across the building? Worship together with his praise team as they lift up the name of Jesus. Let's have church today in Jesus' name. You can be seated if you need to. God bless you.
into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. seated if you need to but worship with us worship with us as we sing this next song in Jesus name hallelujah Jesus thank you Jesus Ooh, how we love you God how we love you God how we love you sweet Lord oh, yeah Yeah. 
prophesied and declared healing. Healing is in this place today. It was prophesied. Salvation is in this place and healing is in this place because God brought it. God brought it on this day. All that you take, you take, you take what the enemy had for me and you turn it. Oh, you turn it around. Oh, you take what the enemy had for me and you turn it around. You turn it around. Oh, 
healing's in the house today. The healer's in the house today. <laughs> He's already said he's going to save in this place. <laughs> I believe he's already healed. Woo! In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 You can return to your seats. We're going to move on in this service right now. Just don't lose this atmosphere of worship, church, whatever you do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just remain standing when you get to your seats. We're going to receive the offering very quickly very quickly and, and move out of the way for a little more worship and then the word. I'm excited to hear the preached word of God today in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you like being blessed? I like being blessed of God. <laughs> you know, even when Joseph was in the pit and the prison, he was still blessed. There were people God put in place in the pit. In the pit, he had Reuben. Reuben was his advocate, even when he was in the pit. And in the prison, he had people all around him who helped him and who brought him into favor until he could finally make his way out of those places. He was blessed. And I like being blessed. I want to be blessed. You know how you're blessed? You give into God's kingdom. Like Pastor said in the prayer room, with your time, with your increase, with your vitality, with your strength, and also with your finance. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to give you an opportunity to be blessed. And when you bring your tithe into the storehouse, there's no better place to put it. You put it in the stock market, it's going to fail. It's going to let you down. You put it in Bitcoin or gold or anything else, it's going to eventually burn with a fervent heat. But when you put it in the kingdom of God, you're laying up treasure in a place that... If you want to be blessed, hallelujah, come give in today. Lord, bless this offering in Jesus' name. Receive it to the furtherance of your kingdom and gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come with a joyful heart and give in. Choir, come on up after you give. Worship with the choir as we sing. Hallelujah. Come on, choir. Thankful to be in this place. It just, it's not lost on me that God talked about healing in the very first words of this song. Talk about healing. So, God, we want you to move. God, move in this place today, God. Oh, God, in your name, Jesus.
falling. Come on. Come on, push just a little bit, church. The Holy Ghost is falling all over this house. Push into it. Push into it and don't stop. Push into it and don't stop. Come on. Come on, the Holy Ghost is falling. People are being baptized and healed and delivered and set free. Come on. Come on. Come on, choir. Give it everything you got. Come on, choir. Give it everything you got in worship. Don't stop. Just let the Holy Ghost fall. Come on, push, 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 push. Come on, push in. Push into the miracle. Push into the healing and the deliverance. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Don't stop. It's here. It's working, it's working, it's working, it's working.
Come on, let's thank the Lord for what he's done in this house. Come on, he's not done, so just, just, just praise him, lift him up, magnify him. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Does anybody believe he's doing great things? Come on, does anybody believe God does great things? He's the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the one that sets us free and changes our world. My God, have mercy. Come on, lift him up and magnify his name today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to, I want you to stretch your hand right over here and just say, Fall, Holy Ghost. Baptized right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. That's it. Don't stop. Don't stop. Somebody believe. Somebody have faith right now. Somebody have faith right now. God, I want you to baptize. Feel her so full of the Holy Ghost right now, Lord. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> Blessed Redeemer. Blessed Redeemer. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to take any more time because we have a, a preacher here today. And um, I... I, I He's under no obligation. We've already had several receive the Holy Ghost across the house. God's worked miracles across this tabernacle. By the way, to every guest that's here, we're thankful you're here. Why don't you return to your seats, be seated just a minute. Some of you have been standing a long time. I'm, I'm very thrilled to have my friend, Brother Stephen Thrasher, with us today. And uh, so if you need to use the restroom, get a drink of water, whatever, um, that now and uh, let me let me say this um, I, I, uh, I love the preaching of the word but I also love the moving of the Holy Ghost and so I want Brother Thrasher to know that uh, he's under no obligation today to do anything he's not an, under an obligation to perform uh, if he wants to get up here and talk to us if he wants to preach whatever uh, we're going to be with him. We're, we're a church that rides with him. But to every guest that is here, I want you to know how thankful we are that you're here. We're grateful that you're in, in the house of the Lord with us. And, uh, and so thank you for being with us. You've made our day by being here. Brother Stephen Thrasher, passed, one of the reasons he's here, he pastors a revival church in Berryville, Arkansas. They're starting daughter works. They're... they're uh, about to build a new building. Their, their growth is just astronomical. They're seeing people receive the Holy Ghost. Lives changed. And I like to I like to be around people like that. I like to get around people like that. So um, we're, we're, we're thankful that he's here. Also, tomorrow night, we're going to do the first of something that we're going to continue around here, and that is business as, as missions. And so if you own a business in this church or you want to start a business or whatever, uh, we're going to be talking about and discussing how God wants to bless that because throughout history, God has blessed giving people. And as a result of that, missionary works, churches have been built overseas, churches have been built in the United States, communities have been reached with the gospel, bus ministries, children's ministries, all that have been blessed through God blessing businesses. Christian businesses and then those businesses given into his kingdom and so it's a plan that works I'm going to tell you if you'll get God involved in your business your business will go bigger and be more blessed than if you just try to do it on your own and the more you give to his kingdom the more he opens the windows of heaven on you so we're going to be talking about all those things one Monday night a month and uh, one Monday night a month and so please be ready uh, and prepared for that. Brother Thrasher, I want you to come. You do whatever you feel. You obey the Holy Ghost. We love you and we honor, we're honored that you're here. This is my friend. I believe in him. I trust him. 
and I'm honored that he's with us today. He made a great sacrifice to be here, got here at 6 a.m. He was on a, a trip with his kids, flew in, packed his truck up, and came, came to Sebastopol. So we hope he gets some sleep tonight. I love you. Hallelujah. How many love your pastor today? I told my wife he's one of the fairest men that I've ever met. And I mean, mean that with all of my heart. You want somebody to treat you good, you got a man of God that's going to treat you good. If you're a visitor, don't be a visitor. Make this your church. Get in here with everything you have and get behind the man of God. I'm here with the obligation today. We're actually still in revival in Berryville, and a couple of my men's preaching. An evangelist that was um, supposed to come, and he got detained in another church, and the Lord was moving there, and he called, and I just got done preaching a little revival for a friend, and he said, will you put your revival off to November? I said, no, we've been praying, and people's fasting. We've been inviting people. I said, I guess I'm just going to preach my own revival. <laughs> And God has blessed us. God has blessed us. We baptized 15 in Jesus' name. God's filled 11 with the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost today, it's for you. I said, if you don't have the Holy Ghost today, it's for you. Anything you need is in this house. Anything you need, all you got to do is call on the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am honored to be here. How many of you helped me preach for just a little while? I was thinking we've had people get the Holy Ghost and preach and people got the Holy Ghost again. The day of Pentecost, 120 received the Holy Ghost. Peter preached and 3,000 got it. So, amen. How many know it's about seeing the kingdom of God advance, seeing people advance in the kingdom of God and lives to be changed? If you have your Bibles, turn me to the book of Mark, chapter number 5. Thank you, Brother Copeland, for inviting me. I'm honored to be here. I got it at 6 o'clock in the morning. I thought I'm going to sleep for about four hours. That didn't work. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm 20 again. <laughs> Somebody says, well, you look 18. Thank you. Now, Mark chapter number 5 and verse number 1. Mark chapter 5 and verse number 1. I want to leave something with somebody today that will help them, help the church, help young people to do something for God. Mark 5 and 1, the church finds it, say amen. It says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he's come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And we know that's what makes a difference. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Let's pray and ask the Lord to have his way in this service. God, we love you. We give you praise. We give you glory. God, I'm asking you to anoint my lips of clay, for I'm nothing. God, I pray that you help somebody in this house today, Lord. I pray you change somebody in this house as only you can. Thank you for these that you fill with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Thank you for the work that you're doing, Lord, and lives in this house. I'm asking you to move in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise, and you can be seated. Y'all don't know me, and I only know a couple of you, so <laughs> just bear with me for just a few moments. Amen. But I do want to deliver what's on my heart today to this church. And the Bible tells us about a man that had been possessed by a legion. And his only opportunity that he had was when Jesus stepped out of that boat. And the Bible said when they seen Jesus afar off, he ran and began to worship him. We know the demons, the devils tried to hold him back, but there was something in this man that said, this is my one opportunity, and I want to do everything I can do to get free. I'm telling somebody today, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity. 
the Lord asked him, he said, what's your name? And he said, Legion, for we are many. If you study a legion, it can be eight to 12,000. He didn't just have a couple thousand demons in him that ran into the swine, but he had around eight to 12,000. Isn't that sad how people can get possessed with things and things that can hold them bound that even pigs don't want? And we see that the Lord had set him free. We know this story, very familiar story. And the Bible tells us, and they that fed the swine, they fled, and they towed it in the city and in the country. They began to testify about what the Lord had done for this man that nobody could help. They went and began to testify about what the Lord had done for this man that nobody could help. I'm telling you, it don't matter if the doctors tell you there's no hope, there's hope in this house. It don't matter if your family tells you you're hopeless, there's hope in this house. It don't matter if your best friends turn their back on you, there's hope in this house. There's help in this house. There's deliverance in this house. The Holy Ghost is in this house. There's joy in this house. Everything you need is in this place. All you got to do is begin to speak the name of Jesus. All you got to do is begin to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that they that fed the swine, they went in the country, and they began to tell what was going on. And then a multitude came out to see what was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil, that had the legion, setting and clothed in his right mind. And the Bible said, and they were afraid. They were afraid. The devil's afraid of a church that's in the right mind. The devil's afraid of a people that's in the right mind. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. They began to tell the story of what took place. They began to testify and concerning the swine. And then when they began to tell what had happened, they began to pray and ask him to leave. They asked Jesus to leave. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. This man began to ask the Lord, Lord, can I get on the ship and go with you? But the Bible says, Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, I want you to go home to your friends, and I want you to tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee. Instead of getting on the ship and leaving and going somewhere else, he said, no, you can't go with me. I want you to go back into the capitalists, and I want you to tell them what I've done for you. How he had compassion on thee, and he departed, and he began to publish into capitalists how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. I want to preach today for just a few moments, if you'll help me. There's power in your testimony. There's power in your testimony. I want to say it again. There's power in your testimony. <laughs> when you're in your right mind, God can use you. When you've been set free, God can use you. There's so many people in this house that's got a testimony, and the devil tries to steal our testimony. You know why? Because there's deliverance when somebody testifies. There's anointing when somebody begins to testify. There's a breakthrough when somebody begins to testify. There's revival when somebody begins to testify. There's deliverance when somebody begins to testify. <laughs> There's a gathering when somebody begins to testify. There's a crowd when somebody begins to testify. That's why the devil wants us to be ashamed of where we came from and the life that we came out of and what we used to be, but God wants somebody to start testifying. God wants somebody to start witnessing. God wants somebody to start spreading this gospel. God wants somebody to tell about his power. Hallelujah. The man wanted to run and get on the ship and follow Jesus and go to people that didn't know anything about his past. That's how we are at times. I tell our church, hey, if you come out of drugs, you go find that drug addict and tell them great things that the Lord has done in your life. You don't have to put your head down and say, that's my old friends. I don't want them to see where I'm at. But you ought to get your head up and say, hey, you ought to come to church with me. Let me tell you what's going on. Let me tell you what God's done in my life. Let me tell you how the Lord has set me free. Let me tell you how the Lord has filled me with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling somebody in this house today, there's power in your testimony. 
How many's got a testimony here today? If you don't have a testimony, God wants to deliver you and fill you with the Holy Ghost and give you a testimony. Go tell your friends. Go tell your family. Go tell your neighbor. Go tell your mama. Go tell your daddy. Go tell your brother. Go tell your sister. Go tell your cousins. Go tell those that you work with. There's power in your testimony. You ever been around drug addicts before? I went into a city that did not have a church in 2006, and we started a church. And I could tell when I was knocking on the door. When they'd open that door, you could tell if they was nervous. You could just see it. You know what it was? The devil scared the people in the right mind. And he's afraid of people that's been delivered. I don't know why we give so much credit to hell, so much credit to the devil or to the adversary, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. The Bible says we're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. If you're not overcoming today, I'm going to tell you how to overcome. Start testifying. Start witnessing. Start telling somebody the good news. Start telling somebody what God's done in your life. Find somebody that's been where you're at and give them your testimony. The enemy wants our youth to be timid and scared and afraid. I'm telling you, we don't have nothing to be afraid. We got the greatest thing there is this side of heaven. We got the greatest thing there is that this world could ever feel or ever experience. Amen. God is looking for somebody to testify. God is looking for somebody that's not ashamed of the gospel, that's willing to stand up and tell a lost and dying world uh, there's deliverance, there's healing, there's victory, there's salvation, there's joy. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. When you begin to speak the name of Jesus, it brings liberty to people that are bruised, to people that are bound, to people that are possessed. That's why the enemy wants us to hold our peace. But you know what? We don't need to hold our peace. We need to lift up our voice and shout the name of Jesus on the rooftop. Shout the name of Jesus at work. Shout the name of Jesus everywhere you go telling somebody. The good news, the good news. You lose your victory when you stop testifying. You lose your victory. How many, when you begin to testify about what God has done for you, makes you just feel the Holy Ghost all over again? Couple people. How about the rest of us? Start reminding, reminding yourself and remembering where God brought you from. The pit of hell that you were in, the bondage you were in, the sin you were in, the weights that was in your life. Uh, and a preacher began to preach to you about the name of Jesus. Uh, and you came down repenting of your sins uh, and got baptized in Jesus' name uh, and received the Holy Ghost. Wasn't that the greatest thing uh, that ever happened in your life? Somebody testify about it. Somebody ought to witness about it. Somebody ought to let somebody else know. There's power in your testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. Your testimony can set the oppressed free. I thank God for my testimony. I thank God where he's brought me from. I wasn't raised in church. I just want to give you guys a little, I just want to testify a little bit. Is this all right? If God can do it for me, he can do it for you. The greatest advertisement that a church needs is not a billboard or a church card. The greatest advertisement a church can ever get is word of mouth. The greatest, the greatest advertisement this church can ever get is somebody testifying to somebody say, hey, you want to get free? I'm going to tell you where to get free at. You want deliverance? I'm going to tell you where to find deliverance at. You're looking for salvation? I'm going to tell you where you're going to see the Holy Ghost. It's going on in our church. God is filling people with the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Lord is moving. Come on, somebody. There's power in your testimony. I wonder what God would do if everybody in this church began to testify. Anybody want to know what happened when Legion went back and began to publish into capitalists what the Lord had done? They didn't want nothing to do with Jesus, but they knew Legion. They may not want nothing to do. People's tired of religion. People's tired of so-called Christianity. People's tired of going places where they can't find deliverance. But you know what happened? Legion began to testify, and the next time that Jesus came, they were bringing out all the sick people. 
The next time Jesus came, they were bringing everybody out to meet Jesus because of one man that testified. I wonder what God would do if everybody in this church just began to testify, just begin to witness, just begin to try to reach somebody. This church would double overnight. I said this church would double overnight if everybody would testify. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. I love to tell you I was raised in church. My mother overdosed when I was 17 years old. I went from house to house. People said they were my friend, was not my friend after you couch surf for a long time, Brother Copeland. We were raised dirt poor. Dirt poor. My dad, my mom passed away. My dad left me. Only thing I had going for me was basketball. I had 15 scholarships to play college ball. I tried to work as much as I could to make it, stay with whoever I could stay, for, stay with, and I ended up at my grandmother's house. I'm so thankful I had a praying grandmother. <laughs> I'm here because I had a grandmother prayed for me. <laughs> I'm here because I had a grandmother that never gave up on me. And I'd come in my, I'd come in my grandmother's house, and I'd sit there, and she had cooked for me, and she'd say, Stephen, how you're just such a sweet boy and all these people in this community that just love you. And inside, I'm like, Grandma, I'm a devil if you only really knew what I was. My grandma knew what I was, but you know what it was? It was her testifying to me. It was her being a light to my life that has brought me to where I'm at today. And something got a hold of me. <laughs> I said, something got a hold of me, and I was sick and tired of, of living the way I was living. I was destined to be a drug addict. I, I was destined to be like the rest of my family. Uh, but I had a grandmother that was Pentecostal. I had a grandmother that knew how to pray. My grandmother would testify to me about Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm telling somebody, it don't matter if your family was a drug addict uh, or you've been in drugs. Uh, there's a God that can deliver you. There's a God that can set you free. You don't have you don't have to follow the past of your family. You don't have to follow the generation of your family. There's a God that can deliver you and work in your life the same way he has mine. I'm telling somebody there's power. There's power in your testimony. And grandma would start talking to me and I'd get her the conviction. And man, it was, it was amazing how God worked. Brother Copeland, I could hear my grandmother in her bedroom at nighttime calling my name out. And I'd be in there sleeping on the couch. She lived in a senior citizen's apartment. She got approval. You're not even allowed to let nobody live there. But she said, my grandson's homeless. Is it okay if he stays with me till he graduates? And I'd be on the couch, and I could hear my grandmother praying for me. And I thought, oh, God, make her stop. Oh, I couldn't handle it. Because something was getting a hold of me. You know, it was as God breaking up my whole hard heart. God wants to break up somebody's hard heart in this house. God wants to break up somebody's old. I was bitter because I felt like the world and my family and nobody done me right. I didn't deserve to be where I was at. You know what God was doing? God was pulling me out of the pit that I was in. God was breaking those chains that was in my life. God was setting me free. Hallelujah. And man, I'd pray and she, she just, God let her stop. And she just prayed more than I could hear her every night. Finally, one night I had a dream and I was tired of it. I, I, looked at, I looked at a cousin of mine that's been in prison over and over and all of them's been in prison. I said, guys, I won't be hanging with you no more. <laughs> I said, I'm going to go to church. And I'm going to go repent of my sins. I knew what I needed to do. I needed to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell somebody, if you're not repenting of your sins, don't you leave this house today without repenting. If you ain't been baptized in Jesus' name, you come get with this man of God and get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a salvation in the other, for there's another name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You're going to take on the name of Jesus Christ and the Lord will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And man, I looked over at my buddies. I said, it ain't going to be this way no more. I'm not going to be hanging out with you guys anymore. I'm going to go to church. I went to church, and God got a hold of me, and I was sitting on that back row, and I couldn't stay there no more. And I got up, and I took off running to that altar. I didn't take off walking. I, I took off running to the altar, and I repented for over an hour and a half. <laughs> 
God broke every chain in my life. I'm telling somebody here today, God wants to break every chain that's in your life. God wants to heal everything that's been wrong in your body and in your mind and in your spirit. The deliverer is in this house. I said the deliverer is in this house. There's salvation in this place today for somebody. I went right to the preacher. I said, I want to be baptized tonight in Jesus' name. Will you baptize me in Jesus' name? You know what? I didn't have to even have a Bible study. I already heard my grandmother already knew about Pentecost. I got baptized in Jesus' name. And then I found myself back in that crowd in the church that wasn't excited. I found myself fit, trying to fit back in into a church with a group of people that wasn't excited. I'm going to tell you, young people, if you got a friend that ain't on fire for God, get away from them. You got a friend that wants a setback, you get yourself away from them. Get away from the crowd and get in the altar and get on fire for God. And I went to a church, I went to a church that they played organized sports. I don't believe in organized sports. But the church I was going to at one time was against, but organized sports. And man, they was all encouraging me to go to college, go to college, go to college. But you know what, I had a, a friend of mine who's my wife now that began to pray for me. And if the devil was ever on me, I went to St. Louis and I scored 30-something points on their senior that was graduating college. And I was in high school, and that coach was offering me a full ride and calling me every day. And I went back, and I began to tell my friend, man, th this is it. And she said, what's the most important thing in your life? I said, success. She said, wrong answer. You need the Holy Ghost. Man, I went home. Somebody testified to me. I wouldn't be here if I wouldn't. Have, she's my wife now. If I wouldn't have had somebody testify to me and say, you know what? It ain't sports. It ain't the world. It's Jesus. I'm telling somebody it ain't careers. It ain't trying to be famous or have some kind of name. It's the Holy Ghost in you. It's the power of God in you. It's deliverance in your life. And I went back. To my house, I was mad. Anybody ever been mad because what the preacher told you or somebody witnessed to you? I was mad. Brother Copeland, I went back. I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and go to college. And I'm going to date four of them college girls. They had cheerleaders. No. I went back so mad. I said, God, if you would tell me what's in the way of me getting the Holy Ghost, I'm going to give it up. <laughs> Man, I went to a revival service with a friend of mine. And God... Showed me a basketball hitting the wood floor. And when I seen that floor, uh, that ball hitting that floor, that preacher didn't even know me. I guess somebody told him my name. He said, God said he'll give you the Holy Ghost today if you'll, if you'll just ask him what's in the way. I said, and I was already asking God. I said, now I said, God, I give it up. God filled me with the Holy Ghost. I shouted in the church for about an hour, speaking in tongues, drunk in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> My daddy used to t teach me that real men don't cry. I'm telling you, real men cry. <laughs> I said, real men cry. I, I began to bawl. I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop laughing. I was drunk in the Holy Ghost. I, I told my friend, I said, you got to take me to my friend's house. And I'm wobbling up there on the door, knocking on the door, and she opened the door. I said, hey, you know what? I'm not going to go play college basketball. God delivered me, and he filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I began to dance on the porch, speaking in tongues. I'm telling somebody, there's power in your testimony. There's power in your testimony. That's why the devil's after your testimony today. That's why the devil's trying to attack you and take your testimony away. Because when you begin to testify to somebody, uh, there's no telling what God will do in your life. Somebody ought to praise the name of Jesus in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I, I was so excited. I stayed up all night reading my Bible. I found out what lost sheep was. <laughs> like, wow, I was a lost sheep. You mean he left the 99 and went after me? Wow, that's how, that's how important your life is to God. That's how important a soul is. Sometimes we get it and we're satisfied with what we got. You didn't realize you didn't leave where you're at and go find somebody else because they need it too. I said they need it too. Somebody needs to hear somebody testify. Brother Copeland, I wonder what God will do if everybody begin to testify to somebody today. Wherever you went, you found somebody to witness to. There's no telling what kind of church will be here Tuesday. There's no telling what kind of crowd would be here. <laughs> You'd have to move some of them over there, some of them over there, get the, get the, get the, uh, 
get the speakers out there where they could hear and we'd be praying people through the Holy Ghost all day and all night. And people begin to testify. I was so excited. You can be seated. I was so excited about the Holy Ghost. It was greater than any high I ever felt in basketball. And the next day I was helping my principal. I had people try to help me because I was trying to make it. And I was helping my principal put in a, a dig a dig a fence to put around a swimming pool. I stayed up all night reading my Bible and praying. I had so much energy. I was out there shoveling away. He came out and he said, Stephen, what's happened to you? I said, what are you talking about? He said, there's just something different on your face. You're happy. What, what happened? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I don't know a whole lot about it, but let me tell you what happened last night. <laughs> I went up to the front of the church and I began to repent and God filled me with the Holy Ghost. I said, I'm so excited. I can't wait to get to school Monday. I got to tell coach, uh, I'm not going to go play college basketball, but I made up my mind to live for Jesus Christ. I'm telling somebody, it's time to make up your mind to live for God with everything you got. <laughs> I never really, never thought I'd ever be a preacher, definitely not a pastor. But, man, I took, I took all my stuff, and I could not wait to get the coach's office. My coach is like my dad. He co-signed for me for a vehicle. We talk, we talk probably three times a week now. You know what he's telling me the other day? He's getting ready to go to a Pentecostal church. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, Coach, I said, the way you coached and gave it all you had, that's what I do. I said, don't go to a church that ain't going to preach to you this truth. I said, you got to go to a church where the power's at. you got to go to a church where deliverance at. you got to go to a church where you can get healing. you got to go to a church where there's miracles. you got to go to an apostolic church, a, a Jesus-named church. There's only one God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I took everything to him and gave it to him. He said, what are you doing? I said, tell those coaches I'm done. I had letter after letter. I said, tell him not to call me no more. I'm done. He said, what do you mean? I said, I had the greatest thing happen to me Friday night. I said, God filled me with the Holy Ghost. It's greater than any ball game. It's greater than any name being the paper. It's greater than any kind of recognition. When I played ball, scored 28 points and 15 rebounds a game, had quadruple doubles, and go home depressed and oppressed and feel like ending my life. When I got the Holy Ghost, it was nothing about what people seen or what people said. I got the greatest thing. I'm telling you, you got the Holy Ghost. You got the greatest thing there is. There's power. There's power. There's power in your testimony. Anybody thankful for the Holy Ghost today? I said, anybody thankful for the Holy Ghost today? He said, what are you doing? I thought you wanted to be successful. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, I came out of a little small town. Mom and daddy on welfare all my life. Didn't have nothing. We, lived, we worked in the field just to try to get a couple pair of pants and a couple pair of shoes. He said, this is your ticket. I said, oh, no, no, no. I got my ticket. God gave me the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I said, uh, he said, what's that mean? I said, coach, it means I'm not going to go to hell. I said, you need the Holy Ghost where you don't go to hell also. Hallelujah. You know what? He said, I am, I'm, I'm ashamed of you, but you know what he calls me now? He tells everybody, you've been my most successful kid that I've ever coached. You've been the most successful kid that I've ever coached. I've seen the hand of God on your life. I'm telling somebody, somebody ought to testify in this house. Somebody to witness in this house. Somebody to tell the good news in this house. My best friend, I taught him a Bible study. Somebody to teach Bible studies here. Uh, you know what? We need some young men to start teaching Bible studies. I'm not waiting on the, I don't have, pastor, if you don't care, I'm going to teach a Bible study. I didn't even know you had to ask the pastor, but I started teaching Bible study. I went to my friend's house, stayed all night with him, taught him a Bible study. He got baptized in Jesus' name, and the Lord filled him with the Holy Ghost. I was in, I was in home at class, and all my friends gathered around and said, what's happened to you? You're not the same. I'm glad you asked. One of, our, my, one of my wife's best friends, her name was Stephanie. They were friends all their life. 
She was raised in a, a Baptist church. And I said, Stephanie, I said, I got the Holy Ghost and started speaking in tongues. Now, I didn't have no wisdom, so I'll tell you what happened. Now, she said, well, our church don't believe in speaking in tongues. I said, your church is wrong. I said, I'm telling you, I don't know nothing about it, but I spoke in tongues. I mean, spoke in tongues when you got the Holy Ghost. I said, I mean, spoke in tongues when you got the Holy You can't get the Holy Ghost without speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is the evidence or the sign that you received the Holy Ghost. You shall speak in new tongues. Man, she was my friend, and she, got, she said, so you're telling me you got to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name and have the Holy Ghost or you can't go to heaven. I said, that's exactly what I'm telling you. I said, and furthermore, without the Holy Ghost, you'll go to hell. Don't nobody, somebody should have taught me how to witness. But she got mad. She left school. She went over and knocked on my friend's house at the time, who's my wife. Said, you ain't going to believe what Stephen said today. She's like, oh, boy. <laughs> he's, he's had too much of this Holy Ghost. What's going on? He told me I'm going to go to hell if I don't have the Holy Ghost. Do you really believe that, that you got to speak in tongues? She said, absolutely. Anybody want to know what happened a couple weeks later? Stephanie came to our church. Started reading in the Bible. When they begin to speak in other tongues, uh, as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance, uh, and she took off running to the front and ran down the altar. I was like, oh, here it goes. I took off running to start praying. She was already talking in tongues. God filled her with the Holy Ghost. Uh, filled up telling somebody, uh, God's looking for a church that'll testify. God is looking for a young people that'll testify. God is looking for a people that'll witness. There's power. In your testimony. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I needed some teaching. Brother Copeland, I need a little bit of teaching. But I'm telling you, God used that zeal of my testimony to bring people in. I wonder how many people had come in if we'd just testify. I wonder what kind of church we'd have of people. How many's ever been in one of them services? It wasn't going very good, and some elderly sister stood up and started testifying. Same testimony she's always testified, but the power of God fell. I've been in churches like that. Uh, some man stand up and say, "You know what? Uh, I've had this Holy Ghost now for fifty years, uh, and it's just as good today as it was back then." All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost began to move. You know why? Because somebody was testifying, somebody was witnessing, somebody was giving God glory. Somebody was giving God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God is so good to us. You know what we need? We need anointed testimonies. I said we need anointed testimonies. There's power when you testify. I didn't realize what God was going to do. I came out of a drug home. God sent me to a city full of drugs to start a church with three people. We were in a little storefront building. I was working at Tyson's making about $8 an hour. Kids now want to make 20 bucks an hour, and they're not even worth that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> I have a business. People don't even know nothing. want 20, 30 bucks an hour. But you know what? This is what happened. We started that little storefront building. I started knocking on doors. Guess where God sent me? He sent me to people that was bound by drugs. He sent me to people that was bound by drugs. And I began to tell them how God brought me out of that kind of family and God can bring you out. <laughs> And I just started preaching about the Holy Ghost. I just started testifying about the Holy Ghost. You want to know what happened? In about six months, God filled 30 people with the Holy Ghost in a brand new church. <laughs> Man, if you ain't got the Holy Ghost today, you need the Holy Ghost. If you ain't living for God, it's time to repent and start living for God. And yet God use you to testify. We just had 190 people in service with us just the other day. When I went there, there was a church that was an affiliated church, and the guy didn't have nobody. He had one person. He said, good luck. He said, I've been here for 10 years, and I haven't got nobody. He was living in the church basement. I'm not being mean. I'm just 
being honest. I said, well, sir, I said, I appreciate what you had to say. I said, but I made up my mind. I come here to die. <laughs> Just kept on knocking doors. <laughs> hey, we don't ever need to get the place that we quit knocking doors. It don't matter how big we get. We don't need to get the place that we quit knocking doors or, or we quit witnessing to people or we quit visiting people or we quit finding somebody to tell them the good news. I'm telling somebody God's calling this church for somebody to testify. God is calling some young men to step up, calling some families to step up and start testifying. How many want to be a witness? I said, how many want to be a witness? How many want to go tell your family? Hey, man, get on your phone. People get on their phone and text all the time. Won't you get on the phone and text somebody your testimony and see what God will do? God is so good to us. We're getting ready to build a new church. Took over another church. A man passed away and just prayed a young man through named Jesse. 15 years old, already stole his mom's car, already in trouble by the police doing drugs. And he came, he came to the church and I just kept on teaching on repentance. He said, I'm going to get baptized. I said, I'm going to baptize you when you repent. I said, when you truly repent, I'm going to baptize you and you're going to get the Holy Ghost. Jesse just kept on coming. He said, Mom, you got to see this guy. you got to come see this guy. He looks like a professional wrestler. I guess he thought I was big. I don't know where he got that at, but. He said, you got to see his mom come, his whole family come. Baptized Jesse in the name of Jesus Christ. He came out of the water speaking in tongues. God's filled his brother with the Holy Ghost. He's bringing people to church. You know what? If you won't testify, God will give a drug addict the Holy Ghost, and they'll be the greatest soul winner the church has ever seen. Everybody needs to take part. Everybody needs to get involved. Everybody needs to witness. Y'all know in 2015, I'm getting ready to close. I know I've talked for a while. 2015, I had a car wreck. A lady bound by drugs like my mom hit me head on, sent me through the sunroof, shattered my face, broke my face, broke my neck in two places, broke my back. I got plates in my neck and my back, four plates in my face. Knocked every tooth out of my head but one. And they told my wife, there's no sense in life flighting him as aorta's tour. He's not going to make it. Another room for a testimony. Hey, there's people in this house that you're going through some things and you're bad on some sickness. Don't you worry, God ain't left you. He just gave you another place for a testimony. Some of you bad on some things in this house. I'm telling you, God ain't done with you. He just wants you to get up and testify about how he's still a healer, how he's still a deliverer, how he still sets the captives free, how he's never left you. He's never going to leave you. I told my wife, I've got the paper. Man, I love going back and reading this. They said, patient is not more than likely not to survive the life flight. They put this in my notes. Told her, do you want to life flight him? She said, absolutely. I don't know why she'd have had millions of dollars in life insurance. She life flight him anyway. <laughs> and my aorta was tore. They said, look at this. His aorta's tore. He's got internal bleeding. I was choking on my own blood. I'm not trying to be gross, but I was choking on my blood. They said, hey, stop spitting that blood. I said, I'm trying to breathe. But you know what? I had a peace come over me when I had my accident. I said, God help me. And I was in so much pain, but all of a sudden a peace came over me. I said, man, this is what it, like, this is what it feels like to die. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die with a smile on my face. And I was just praying. I said, tell my wife, meet me at the emergency room. She got there. I said, call my brother, call my pastor, tell him I love him. I thought I was checking out. And they told her there wasn't a chance. I had a 1% chance to live. Hey, the doctor may tell you you got a 1% chance. I don't care if he tells you you got stage 4 cancer, stage 5. My God's still a healer. My God's still a miracle worker. My God's still a deliverer. My God's still a way maker. Somebody in this house can get your healing today. Somebody in this house can get your healing today. Somebody in this house can get your victory today. And you can go witness to somebody else. I usually don't preach when God moves like this. But I really felt to do this. You know what happened? They lost me two times. And God brought me back. 
I said, they lost me twice, but God brought me. You know why? There's a church that was praying. There's a youth group that was praying. People all around, I'm telling you, there's power in prayer. There's power in prayer. There's power in prayer. When the doctors couldn't do nothing, God showed up and showed them that he's God and God alone. One place that they lost me, they, were, they bagged me. And they made my wife sign a bunch of papers. They said, I was on life support and quit breathing. I didn't even know you could die on life support. I died on life support. And they said, we got to go in right now and do this procedure. And they were bagging me every now and then, making that thing breathe for me. And um, they said, we want you to sign this paper right here. What it was, she is signing that they wouldn't be reliable if I died. They went in there, and that doctor said, that doctor's on the phone. She walked out and said, church, if we've ever prayed, told the preachers, get a hold of everybody. If we've ever prayed, it's time to pray now because they're not giving him any hope. They started praying, and I started breathing on my own. God started breathing for me. I said, God started breathing for me. Hey, when you can't breathe on your own, there's a God that will give you breath. When you can't walk on your own, there's a God that will walk for you. There's a God that will carry you. <laughs> there's power in your testimony. And, man, I'm sitting there, and I was, I, was on, I was in intensive care for 21 days. I was... I was on the vent for 12 days in a coma for eight days. While I was on the vent, I was riding. When I was supposed to be out of it, I heard, I heard my pastor's wife, Sister Blake, would say, Stephen Thrasher, you shall live and not die. And I started crying right there on the vent. They're trying to turn up that Michael Jackson juice on me. Because there was a response. You know why? It don't matter if you're out of it when you hear somebody speak the word of God. You hear somebody begin to pray over you. <laughs> there was a life. I wanted out of that bed. They told me I'd never walk again. That They told my wife if I didn't come off the vent, they were going to have to trick me. I would have a trick. I came off the vent that day. What a mighty God we serve. Anybody believe in miracles in this house? Anybody believe in miracles in this house? They told me, I'd ask him, I said, hey, Doc, am I going to be able to walk again? Am I going to be able to walk again? He said, I, just don't, I don't know if you're going to be able to walk again or not. We just, we really don't know. We're not going to know until we do surgery on you. <laughs> I said, Doc, I said, no, am I going to walk again? I'm going to play basketball in six months. I said, I'm going to go back out there with the kids. I'm going to get to play basketball in six months. They done surgery on me. They said, you know, you're probably, we're going to try to have to teach him how to walk again. He's laid there for 20-something days, his feet swollen. I walked three laps all the way around the hospital. All them nurses were standing up crying because they knew it was a hand up. What are you saying that? Because I'm telling you there's power when somebody testifies about what God can do. There's power when somebody testifies about the miracles of God. Anybody want to give me a few more moments? Man, I thought this is it. I'm walking now. I'm walking. Man, I'm walking. I'm walking. I'm I'm doing everything they're telling me to do. I'm recovering. They're looking at me like there's no way. I mean, everything was messed up. <laughs> Thank God for a praying church. Thank God for people who know how to pray. Thank God for people who know how to touch God. That's why I'm here. Somebody prayed for me when I couldn't pray for myself. Hey, you praying for somebody's going to help them come here. You testifying that somebody's going to help them come here. And in the hospital, when... I woke up the first thing I said, I said, I want you to get a hold of that lady that hit me and tell her I forgive her. While I was out of it, God was dealing with me. You, I mean, you guys see me now. I used to, I was fit. I had hair. <laughs> now I got a $175,000 mouth. <laughs> my teeth were more than my house. <laughs> but you think about it, somebody like, Why? The very thing that I hated is what the devil tried to kill me with. And then he tried to make me bitter. And I refused to be bitter. 
I'm telling somebody, bitterness will make you sick. Bitterness will oppress you. Bitterness will, will depress you. I'm testifying to somebody. You ought to let go of your bitterness and live for God. My wife, my wife said, Steve, I don't even know her name. How do you want me to call her and tell her you forgive her? You want to know what happened 30 minutes later? My phone rang and Laura Ponce was on the other end. And she was crying. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She said, ma'am, I don't know you, but my husband, God told my husband to tell you he forgives you. And she just sobbed and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. She said, I told God if that preacher would live, I'll go to church with him. I baptize her in Jesus' name. Is it worth going through things and win a soul? Absolutely, it's worth it. Is it worth going through things and have a testimony? Absolutely, it's worth it. She brought her friend. I'm gonna, can I go a few more minutes? Man, I thought, I'm getting out. I'm getting my walking papers. They talked my wife into putting me in rehab. They said he's got brain damage. They misdiagnosed me. I had brain damage before the accident. <laughs> so they put me in rehab. I get there, and this drill sergeant lady comes in. I'm standing up. She said, Mr. Thrasher, you sit down. I said, ma'am, I said, I'm so excited I can walk again. I just want to walk. She said, have you seen your face? <laughs> No, I ain't. When I looked in the mirror, I wanted to cry. Some of y'all may want to cry right now, but if you've seen that picture, and I, she said, you, are, you have a brain injury, and you're not allowed to be walking. Look at your papers. Look at everything that's happened to you. The devil is trying to take my testimony. I said, the devil is trying. The devil's after somebody's testimony. You know why? There's power in your testimony. That's why hell's after your testimony. When you give it, God's going to deliver somebody. <laughs> she said, you cannot leave your bed. Man, I felt all the oppression. I said, you know what? I don't want no drugs. You know why I didn't want no drugs? Because they were pumping me with everything. I said, doc, I said, I don't want no more drugs. So then they're saying I have brain damage. You can't live without pain pills. You can't live without this. I said, I lived before I got here, and God's the one that kept me. Ain't medicine. I can make it now. <laughs> I'm telling somebody, you don't have to have narcotics when you got Jesus. You don't have to have drugs when you got Jesus. She slipped me a pill, and I could... I, could tell because I got high. I told my wife, I said, hey, they, they lied to me. I told them I didn't want this medicine. That doctor came. He said, you're going to die, son. I said, if I was going to die, doc, I'd have died when y'all gave me a 1% chance. I said, I'm going to live. I said, but there's no way I want to get out of this place and go out there and hit somebody like somebody hit me, and then you got to take care of somebody else because you guys got me to be a drug addict. I said, I don't want your narcotics. I don't want your uppers. I don't want your downers. I said, I'm going to let God take care of you. You know what God did? God took care of me. God will take care of you. I said, God will take care of you. The devil. Tried to tell me I'd be a drug addict like my family. I ain't on pain pills. <laughs> I ain't on prescription medication either. <laughs> I got something greater than that. You know the only high I got's high on the Holy Ghost. I had to lay there all night. She told me, she said, uh, don't get up. You cannot get up till the doctor comes in. I said, how long? said, you got to have a badge before you can even walk in the hallway. I said, how long does it take to get a badge? said, six weeks. I started praying. God, let me get my badge where I can walk and walk outside. God, I want my freedom back. The devil's after your freedom. The devil's after your testimony. That's why he wants to weigh you down to press you. Somebody needs to be free today in Jesus' name. Somebody to shake those chains off in Jesus' name. I know there's people that's been free, but there's some people here that you ain't got free yet, and God wants to move in your life. God wants to deliver you. God wants to set you free. Brother, if I'm lying, I'm dying. This happened. The next day, I said, God, that morning I got up early. I knew they were coming in about 7 o'clock. I wanted to make sure I was up. I got up early. I was praying and rocking in that in that bed, 
I said, God, you give me the strength to do everything they tell me to do. I want my badge today. I'm the only person I know of that got their walking badge in day one. They said, Mr. Thrasher, you're going to be here four to six months. I said, I'm only going to be here for a week. I'm going home. That guy said, don't let me pull your arm down. He grabbed my arm, and I just pulled him right to me. Don't let me push your leg down, and I just kept that leg straight. It was God. I said, it was God. I've been laying there and lost all my muscle mass. It was God. Everything he told you, he said, you got to be able to do this. You got to be able to eat. Well, I really couldn't eat. I mashed my food down. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> Can't lie behind the pulpit. I mashed my food down. I couldn't swallow my throat. Everything was so messed up I couldn't swallow. My wife had to blend my food almost like a shake. That's the only way I could eat for four months. But you know what happened? I got my walking badge that first day. That night shift, that lady come in. I'm out there walking. She said, Mr. Thrasher, I told you you can't get a better. I said, boo yeah. <laughs> Look at that right there. I said, I got my badge. God help me. I told you I can walk. I started walking 20-something laps around that rehab. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And God be for us who can be against us. I'm telling somebody God's on your side. Now, he don't do those things for you to sit there and not tell nobody. I'm not bragging. I'm bragging on my God. I'm not bragging about me. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I'm bragging on my God. I'm bragging about what's well, time we start bragging about what our God can do. The world's telling you what they can do. We ought to brag about what our God can do and what our God has done. Somebody ought to testify. Somebody ought to testify. Somebody ought to testify. I really feel that young people, it's time to start testifying. Mom and daddy, it's time to, it's time to get your fire back. It's time to pray back through. Get your excitement back about God. It's time to have revival. It's time to have a move of God. I went in there. I add, added up my checkbook and all my bills in my head. Because they were trying to say, you got brain damage. They was wanting my insurance money. They're like, if you leave early, your insurance may not pay for it. I said, I don't care. I'm ready to go home to my church. Well, you're going to be here. It's going to take a couple weeks to get you released. I said, no. I said, I'm getting out of here in a week. I got out in five days. I said, I got out in five days. That's how great my God is. Hey, don't you tell me my God ain't a healer. Don't you tell me my God will leave you. Don't you tell me God will leave you high and dry. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He said, Lo, I'm with you always. And man, right on my checkout date, my blood pressure was through the roof. On the low end, it was like a, the high end was 189. The low end was 139. He said, you got to take this blood pressure medication. I said, Doc, I told God I'm leaving with no medicine. Now, no wonder they thought I had brain damage. <laughs> he said, I'm going to get your script. My wife is right there. I said, baby, I don't want I said, how long, Doc? He said, I don't know how long you're going to be on this. I said, I'll tell you what, I'm not going with that. He said, i got to send you with this or you can't get out. He went to get my script. I said, baby, take my hand. We're going to pray for another miracle. <laughs> Hey, somebody can be healed of your blood pressure problems in this house. Somebody can be healed of diabetes in this house. Somebody can be healed of cancer in this house. Somebody can be healed of any sickness in this house. She took my hand, started praying. I didn't dance. I didn't roll on the floor, but God moved. Doctor come back in. He had my script, Mr. Thrasher, which pharmacy, uh, Miss Thrasher, does he go to? I said, Doc, I said, check it again. God took it from a hundred and something on the low end down to 87. Right there in front of me and my wife, he ripped up that prescription. Said, I guess you don't need it after all, do you? I said, no. I said, God kept me and I won't leave without it. Well, praise God. Anybody believe God's still a healer? Anybody believe God's still a miracle worker? Then somebody ought to testify. Somebody ought to testify. Man, I got, to, I got to go back. We baptized that lady. Her friend came. 
I had a neck brace on. Pastor said, it ain't going to be long and you're going to be preaching again. Because the way I was praying, he said, you're going to be back to preaching. He said, preach, you know, 15 minutes. It ain't going to be long. You know what? It wasn't like 10 days. I was already in the pulpit preaching the neck brace on like this right here. And I gave it all I had. You know, I told God, if you let me live, I'll preach with teeth. I'll preach without teeth. I'll preach if I'm sick. I'll preach if I'm hurting. I'll tell somebody what you've done for me, God. I'm telling somebody the reason we lose our victory is we complain about what we're going through instead of testifying about it. We complain about our trials instead of testifying. Say, hey, this is just another testimony. And let me do it with joy. Let me do it magnifying God. Let me do it being a witness. There's power in your testimony. And man, the Spanish lady comes and she come to church. I'm telling you, God just started filling people with the Holy Ghost. She come, I went up there, we baptized Laura. Her friend couldn't speak any English. I, I told her son, his name was Orlando. He's, he's been my youth leader. He's married to my ladies leader now. At that time, he just came in with his mom visiting. I said, tell your mom God has something for her. So he said in Spanish, she looked at me, see. I said, tell her God wants to fill her with the Holy Ghost. He told her, and I seen tears in her eyes. Well, I wasn't talking about right then. I turned around. I was wore out. I'm like, I'm going back to my chair. I just said everything I had to say. So I'm on my way back to my chair. That lady gets out of the pew and followed me to the front. Oh, my pain went away. <laughs> Holy Ghost started moving. I said, repent. She started repenting. Laid hands on her. She started speaking in tongues. Her son come back the next night. He seen his mom. She says, she don't speak in Spanish. She's speaking something. I don't know what she's speaking. I said, she's speaking in the Holy Ghost. She's speaking in a heavenly language. Laid hands on him and God filled him with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling somebody, it's time for somebody to get the Holy Ghost. It's time for more people to get the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Man, God just did miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And I started going. I was like, I'm going to go start praying for sick people. Lay in our church. Her mom was Church of Christ. Her dad's a Church of Christ pastor. Prayed them through the Holy Ghost. Her mom fell downstairs in the 70s and broke her back, had blood clots in her heart and lungs. The uh, Church of Christ pastor come, told them to get the funeral arrangements ready. She said, hang on. Her sisters got mad. Said, we don't want no Jesus name preacher coming up here. She said, I want you to come pray for my mama. Man, I walked in there, brother. God did it for me. I walked right up to her. She could barely move. I said, God healed me, and God's getting ready to heal you. I started praying in the name of Jesus. We speak the name of Jesus over you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's time to speak the name of Jesus. I said, it's time to speak the name of Jesus. This woman started crying. Her, the whole Church of Christ, if you're Church of Christ, you need the Holy Ghost. Come up here today. But they all went out. They said, that preacher's praying too loud. Hey, there ain't nothing called too loud when the Holy Ghost is in it. She started crying. She was crying, brother. She, was, she grabbed my hand. She said, honey, she said, will you pray again? I felt something hot all over my body. I said, I know you've been told there ain't no miracles, but there's still miracles. That's why I'm walking right now. Matter of fact, I ain't been out of the hospital very long, but I'm here to visit you. You're coming out of that bed in Jesus' name. Come on. Anybody know what God did? Every one of those blood clots left that day. He caught a book called Shata Mahat. I said, every one of those blood clots left that day, God took them out of her heart and out of her lungs. Family was mad, but she said, you know what? I ain't church of Christ no more. She said, when my husband dies, I'm going to go to that Pentecostal church, and that brother Thrasher is going to be my pastor. God just healed me. She told everybody how God healed her. They came in there, and they recorded her and said, this is a medical miracle. She said, it ain't a medical miracle. It's the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling somebody, God's still a healer. God's still a miracle worker. God's still a way maker. Let's stand together. The lady that hit me was addicted to pills because her daughter was murdered. 
God helped this woman to go to the prison and give her Bible to the very man that murdered her daughter. That man wrote me a letter. His brother was a UFC fighter. They were in gangs. They were bad people. And his brother was going to kill him when he got out because he liked Laura's daughter. They were friends and they were close and he was so bitter. And when he seen what Laura had done and he heard what the preacher had done, he quit fighting. And he went to church and he repented. And he's living for God now. He's not in Berryville, but he's living for God now. And he tells the reason I'm here, I thought about killing my brother. I'd be in prison where he's at because of bitterness. I got to write an article in Arkansas. It went all over Arkansas about the worst, something worse than an accident is having bitterness in your heart. There's somebody in this house today, you're bitter. I've said this three or four times. I feel it. You are harboring bitterness, and that's the reason why you're not getting your breakthrough. But if you'll let God today, God will take your bitterness away. God will help you to forgive that person. God will help you to forgive that person. God will help you forgive your family. Forgive that man of what he's done in your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Eric, to this day, he quit fighting. He is living for God. God's so good. We've seen miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. We just had a man, they said he had cancer, had lumps. I went with him. We prayed for him. I said, God is going to take that away. He had a big old mass. That doctor said, there's nothing we need to do. He said, it's shrinking on its own. No, it ain't shrinking on its own. God's shrinking that cancer. I'm telling somebody, God can shrink that cancer out of your life today. I appreciate y'all for giving me time. I know we've had great worship in God's move. I feel God wants to do something. Somebody need a miracle today? Somebody needs a miracle. Come stand right here. Hallelujah. You need God to heal you? Come on. There's somebody in this house right now. Somebody been holding bitterness? Come up here. Somebody the devil's been after your testimony? Come up here. Somebody needing the Holy Ghost? Come on up here. There's other people. Come on, church. You that's got the Holy Ghost, begin to pray right now. There's power in your testimony. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody else. There's somebody else in the name of Jesus Christ. God, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. That's it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Reach out, reach out, reach out. Listen, as he's praying for people and God's working a miracle. Well, he's praying for people and God's working a miracle. God, God's going to work numerous miracles right now. Malik, I need you to come up here just a second. It has nothing to do with the accident, son. You're not going to have an accident. I'm not prophesying that. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is while this man was preaching, God kept speaking to me and saying, I want to use Malik as a testimony just like I used him. I want him to have that same testimony to be able to go in and win people. You see the excitement that's on this man? You, you feel that infectiousness that moved through this crowd while he was giving his testimony? God wants to use Malik the exact same way. God wants to use Malik that exact same way. And so while he's laying hands on people and praying for people, where's Brother Kraft? Brother Kraft, I want you to come up here and I want you to lay hands on Malik right now. God's going to use this man. Let me tell you something. This church needs to be a lot more blended than it is. And it's not because we don't want it to be. It's because there's a resistance. But guys like Malik can be the answer to that. Guys like Malik can be the answer. This church ought to be an exact reflection of this community. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Malik, you heard what this you heard what this man preached today. God wants to use you as a witness and in ministry. That's it. Lay hands on him. Oh my God, right now in the name of Jesus. Would you lift your hands right now? I'm gonna tell you, God can heal you right where. 
If this man preached to you and you need a miracle, or you've got a situation you want deliverance from in your mind or your spirit, you ought to make your way to the front of this building. It's time to not be ashamed anymore. If you're wrestling with an addiction, it's not time to be ashamed of your addiction. It's time to say, God, if you can deliver him, you can deliver me. Come on, right now, right now. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, don't stop. Don't stop. Miracles are taking place in this house. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, don't stop. Don't stop. Holy Ghost. Come on, come on. God's not done. God's not finished. God. My God, Holy Ghost, right now, I, I pray for deliverance. I pray, pray for hope. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Holy Ghost. My God, deliverance is here. Deliverance is here. Deliverance is here. Come on, deliverance is in this house. Deliverance, oh my God. Come on, don't stop, folks. Don't stop. The Holy Ghost is working. Come on up. Listen, I know it's 2.05. Let's give God five more minutes. Come on, he's working miracles. If it was your son or your daughter or your brother or your sister or your mama up here, you'd want us to take the time to see the miracle take place. That's it, that's it, that's it. Just a few more minutes. Come on, don't stop, folks. Don't stop, folks. Don't stop, folks. We seldomly go past time, but when God's working, don't stop Him.
miracle right now. God's working, God's working, God's working, God's working. Come on, God's working, God's working, God's working. Healings are taking place, deliverance is taking place. to lift our hands and thank God for what he's done in this place today. Come on. Come on, praise him together right now. Let's magnify the King of kings and the Lord of lords.
you thankful for what God's done in this place today? Aren't you thankful for what God's done in this place today? My Lord, have mercy, and He's still working. He's still working. I want to thank every guest for being here today. I want to thank every guest for being in here. Of course, you, if you've been here more than three or four times, we don't count you a guest anymore. You're just one of us. But if you're a guest here today, we want to thank you for being with us. There's still people praying all over this auditorium, so please be careful not to disturb them. Everybody say 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, we're going to be having Sunday school right here at 3 o'clock. Please join us at 3 for Sunday school. Adult class right here. New believers class. That's it, Holy Ghost. Just go ahead back there, Holy Ghost. Just go ahead and fall, Holy Ghost. Heal and deliver and set free. And renew in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're dismissed respectfully. Don't, don't disturb anybody praying. Be careful. If you got conversation, take it to the foyer. God bless you in Jesus' name.